Welcome everyone to the True Path Technologies web series called True Path Cool Tools. You can see that beautiful logo right there. Uh, thank you participants for joining us live and thanks to our viewers who are joining us on demand. I'm Jamie Scott Okataya, CEO of JSA, and it's my honor to introduce you to our presenter today, our demo, uh, our host, um, my friend Douglas Morrow. He is the founder of True Path Technologies. Hey, Hi, Doug. everyone. Hi, Jamie. Uh, so, just a quick note about True Path Technologies. Um, they are the leaders in uh, cutting edge IT software services. They specialize in in-house services for new or existing IT monitoring software. So um, this is this is their bag, if you will. The leaders here. We have them uh, today. You can see all the beautiful logos um, of uh, of their clients uh, on this slide here. You all can see my slides, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay, and um, and remember this uh, easy to use web-based portal software provides bandwidth and line quality monitoring and reporting. Douglas specifically, not just the founder of TruePath Technologies, he's also senior engineer, uh, brings 20 years of expertise, and is a published author, we should mention. He wrote the book, um, the O'Reilly book, that is, on um, SNMP, so if you, the essential SNMP. So um, absolutely, still Amazon's number one selling network management book, um, and it's now in its second edition. So definitely something to check on, Amazon.com. <laughs> and um, so this webinar series is um, really giving us a peek into okay, what does the, the, the company on software monitoring use to, uh, what are the tools they use in-house every day to make their business um, better and faster mm -hmm. and greater than it, uh, than it already is. So, um, with that, today's uh, showcase, if you will, is HW Group. Can you tell us uh, a little bit, Douglas, about HW? I sure can. So thanks, Jamie. Um, you know, as you know, at TruePath, TruePath, we specialize in hardware, software, monitoring tools. We really want to be that that single shop for all your monitoring needs. Um, we don't do the monitoring ourselves or have a network operation center. We set things up so that our customers have the tool set up and configured properly. So we've been around for a little over 11 years and in the beginning we obviously saw a need and customers saw a need for facilities based monitoring. Facilities based monitoring can be seen as like data center, um, humidity, temperature, water detection, security door access and things like that. And we really fell into a great relationship, a great partnership with HW Group, Hardware Group and uh, they're based out of uh, Czech and um, a great team and uh, a great set of products. And so what we're going to be doing today is just showcasing a few of their products. Now the good and the bad of HW Group is they have a lot of products, right? Which is more good than bad, but when we start talking about figuring out which one to use, that's sort of where, where TruePath can come in because we can help sort of identify which products you should use. So we're going to get into, um, again, we're going to talk about today, I'm going to uh, tilt the camera down and talk a little bit about the uh, IP watchdog light. I'm going to talk about some water sensors, an STE2. We've got a uh, Poseidon 2 3266. And all these names mean absolutely nothing to anybody, right? So let me go ahead. I'm going to share my screen. And I'm going to start showing um, the uh, product map here. So. Hopefully you can see my screen. Yay. We've got uh, yeah, we've got your 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 URL up. Yep. Good. Yep. Good. Good. So what I want to do is this is uh, HW Group's uh, web page under uh, devices, and this is just going to give you um, a good example of sort of how many products that they have out there, and they're really broken up into three different products: the monitoring set, IP serial, and uh, access type type products. We're going to concentrate just on the monitoring side today, if you can imagine. So, uh, but we've used all their product lines. And I do want to say one thing as I move forward is that these are really industrial grade devices. These are not your uh, cheap, you know, easily broken kind of devices. We've been partners with these guys for I think we're up to seven years now. And we get maybe one or two returns a year. 
And quite frankly, a lot of those are just configured wrong and we reflash them and they're absolutely fine. So when people call up and say, hey, you know, are these going to be reliable? Can I bet my sort of business on it? And the answer is yes, 100%. These are really great products, not just from a hardware physical side, but also from a software uh, resilience, resiliency side. So here you can see the uh, products map. Um, they have what's called, people say, well, how do you pronounce that? It's the Democles. So their Democles line, they have their Aries line, they have their STE line, and these are just different types of devices that are for different purposes. And I'm going to show a product matrix to see what each of those mean. And when we talk about monitoring, we talk about like one-wire sensors, so humidity, temperature. Um, you can get into things like dry contacts. And the dry contact is where uh, a door closure, um, open, close, it would alert this device. So you have these physical boxes that have the, the, the ability to interact with their environment. Once they interact, there's really two things you can do. One is you can go onto their web page, which I will show in a little bit. Second thing is you can have um, alerts sent out. So you can have alerts sent to email or your phone or you know, things like that. Uh, really nice way. Um, for us, the big thing is you can, you can integrate these into your full-blown monitoring system. So we have a lot of telcos, right, that have a whole bunch of network equipment, have a whole bunch of telephone equipment, and they also have data centers and POPs. So they want to know, hey, is the generator on? Am I low on fuel? Is the data center flooded? And they then integrate these tools, or we do, with their, for instance, uh, OP5, SolarWinds, CheckMK, those kinds of tools that are you know out there today. Um, so those are the products. They have a whole line of serial products as well as access products for um, RFID, uh, getting into racks, things like that. Um, if we go into the sensor line, these are the kinds of quote unquote things you can monitor. And they're all different. They're all different grades. So you can do uh, monitor a uh, humidity temperature, one wire, for your rack. So it can be um, screwed right into the rack. Uh, it makes it really easy to fit into a 19-inch or 10-inch rack, like a 1U. Um, you can get things like your temp one wire flat 3-meter cable so that you can do your refrigerator or your freezer. So the cable's flat so that you can still close the door and then uh, monitor that. One of the big uh, uses for this is uh, pharmaceutical. The different products that are in the freezers and refrigerators have to be kept at a, a certain temperature. If they fall out of that, then they become no good. So you've got these cures for diseases and whatnot that are really expensive, and they need to know when those things fall out of range, and that's what you could use this, this for. You get into one wire UNI and you get a little more uh, intricate. Uh, you can do things like um, you can do water leak detection. You can do uh, current to see how much am I using uh, power-wise or to see if power goes uh, on and off. So there is a whole array of devices and sensors you can hook up to it. So it's really twofold, right? You have the device itself and then you have the sensors. And so with that, uh, you know, the question is, well, geez, which one should I buy? Right. And what, yeah. So, so what we do, and, and you know, I said this during our during our uh, you know warm up, is a lot of the customers come to us and say, hey, I want to get an STE plus. And the first thing we say is, well, back up a second, tell us what you really want to do. And they say, well, I want to be able to to monitor flood and three doors, and I want to monitor two humidity you know temperatures. So what happens a lot of times is a customer sort of falls in love with a picture or a flyer or whatnot, and they might have a product that has other features that, that they don't need, like a bunch of relays, a bunch of dry contacts, and then what happens is they either underbuy or they overbuy. And so we do, we say, hey, let's, let's look at exactly what you want, and we'll help identify that product. So we actually use internally, this is their uh, product map. This is a really uh, useful eye chart. And so uh, you can see on the left, for instance, we have the one-wire sensors. We've got digital outputs down here. Is, does it support SMS? Can we send? You know, how many emails can I send to when there's an alert? And you really just use this as sort of like a multiplication table here. You go across. You come up and say, okay, I want four digital inputs. Well, here it is. So I can do the 3266. I can do the P2 3266. And you can start to dial in the 
uh, specific device that you want. Um, and that's a great starting point. And then we usually show that to be, okay, well, you want four and four. Well, there's other ones, a smaller device, might be a little less expensive, or a bigger device, which allows you for growth. So it's a great way uh, to go through and see the features that you need, match it up to the product that you want. I've got some interesting uh, products for you to sit, you know, show today. Um, not so much on unboxing because we already have that. We are going to get into a fully configured, ready to roll device. This right here is the STE2 product. Mm -hmm. And the STE2 is a monitoring device that uh, you can plug into your Ethernet. And if you're familiar with power over Ethernet, you can do that as well so that you don't even need to plug in power. It'll even do wireless, thus the uh, plastic case. Uh, there are two ports, but it supports three sensors. So you could plug in a, a temperature, a humidity, or you could have a daisy chain and, and plug something else in. And then there, what these are um, dry uh, contacts. So you can um, have a digital in so that we can actually see when, for instance, you might have seen these on your door. So when somebody opens the door, this goes away, we'll come back, this device can actually sense that. So this is so, a really cool device. Go ahead, so question. Alarm companies, refrigerator doors, like all of these are, are using this type of technology? Exactly. Yep, these are the kinds of things. Now, to be fair, alarm company might have their own version of this. You know, like some of the big alarm companies already have some types of devices, but we find that companies, the, the, because they're proprietary, they end up being really, really expensive. Right. So for two or three hundred dollars, you could get a device like this that then you can do, you know, six different things. You can monitor six different pieces within your environment as opposed to spending like eight hundred dollars to pay the alarm company to do one door. So, you know, we're seeing a blend of that where people may use the alarm company for just one or two things, and then they use a product like this that's more flexible, more cost-effective, um, and can be integrated in their existing monitoring. Because, again, you can do SNMP through this. You can integrate it. There's an API. You can yank down all the data. Uh, they even have software to access the logging on this. So if this loses connectivity to the network, there's some devices that have the ability to store the data internally, and then you can pull it once it connects up. And again, that gets back to the matrix of figuring out, well, is that a feature you need? Okay. Um, I, I do want to say that they even have some that uh, go over the cellular network. So this has to be plugged in through the uh, you know, Ethernet or it goes to the Wi-Fi. But if you're a uh, windmill out in the middle of nowhere, uh, you're not going to have Wi-Fi, right? You're not going to have you know, Ethernet connectivity, let's say. So some of their devices, you can plug a SIM card in and then get the same features and functionalities right over the cellular network. So that's, that's uh, really popular as well. That's amazing. And yeah, then really how, do you, how do you interact with it? What's your, what's your dashboard look like? So I'm going to show my screen again, and I'm going to show you the STE2. So hopefully now you can see my uh, screen set up here, right? Yeah. And what, right? Yeah. We're good? Good. Okay. So um, we have three sensors hooked up to this right now, really one and two built in. We've got our temperature sensor, which was that wire right here that you can see. And that guy is sitting right here. And um, if you look on my screen, we have it up into 21.7 Celsius. And the contact is set to closed right now. And you'll see that this is actually pretty close. And if I move it away, watch what happens to the screen. It goes to open. And then I go back and it goes to close. So think about how powerful your company is spending millions and millions of dollars in a remote data center for your application and your employees and your customers. And I hook this simple device up to your rack so that when somebody opens the cage, I get notified. I also know through this if the air conditioning is working because the temperature is going to be monitored. And if there could be three different temperatures. could be one for outside the rack, inside, and maybe under the floor. 
You can even do things, um, which I'll show a little bit later, which is their uh, flood sensors and their uh, water detection. So again, uh, I was at uh, FISPA uh, giving this presentation, and there's a really funny picture, which I wish I could bring it up quickly, but it's basically showing two guys that are swimming, literally swimming in their data center because it flooded. And the joke there is that you have a couple hundred dollar device, even if it was 500 or a thousand dollar device, to be able to know that something has water in it is just invaluable. It just, it's, it really is priceless. Yeah. Um, and this kind of device can do that. So web-based, getting back to the screen here, you can get up into you know, general setup. There is a very easy tool that they give you uh, for free. It's called the uh, config tool. And you'll see we have a whole bunch of these devices in our labs and you know, set up. You just plug it into your network. You click find devices. It comes up on here. You click on it, and it'll bring up the you know, web interface. You can go through here, set all the uh, data up. You can set up your email. Set up the Wi-Fi, the sensors, SNMP. One of the other really neat things is uh, people that are sort of outside the monitoring uh, realm. They, you know, they may say, "Look, I just want to go to a single dashboard yeah. and be able to look at all my sensors." And HWG or Hardware Group gives you a free service called SenseDesk. And this is what we're looking at here. And this is different, basically, demos that are sending information up. So we could have our STE2 sending information about our temperatures, about our power, about volts, and you know, having all these different devices, uh, you know, putting that out there. So you could go and you could look at these sensors. And then it shows graphs. It shows charts. And this can be done without really changing your firewall. So again, you now have your 25 windmills that are scattered across New York. You have these devices that are in the windmills pushing data up to the cloud. You log in with a username and password and you can then very easily see what is the status of my business. Very powerful and even more cool is it's free. So that's the kind of thing that you can get with the um, HWG push devices like this. Wow. Yeah, cool. So I'm going to show you another cool device. So that is the STE2. Um, and I'm going to show you another really neat device, which is the IP Watchdog. Da -da -da -da. Here it is. <laughs> and uh, let me bring up the spec sheet on this so I don't forget some of the cool things that it has. Um, so this is an interesting device, very popular. IP Watchdog 2 Lite and um, connect it through Ethernet and you have power and then uh, you can even have um, power come in through a um, not just a barrel jack but an external power supply if you want for you know data center and then on top of this we have um, relays and contacts that allow you to power something on and off be able to trigger something and what that means as a great use case is a lot of times people say to us um, I'm sure you've been at your house and your internet's gone down and what do you have to do? Well, you simply have to go over to your router and power it off and power back on. Well, this IP watchdog will go out and it'll ping a device like, I don't know, google.com as a great example. That should never go down. And if for some reason I can't ping Google and I can't ping microsoft.com, I'm actually going to now throw the power on it. So we have this device that is connecting and is pinging this cool little device over here called the STE2. And when I yank this power, I'm obviously going to lose connectivity to it, and this device is going to watch for it. And it's going to go out there and it's going to say, hey, if I don't see it, I'm going to go ahead and start cycling power. And that's this little example right here. So there is so many use cases for a product like this. Um, Un, you know, unfortunately, there are a bunch of devices in this world that are just control-alt-delete. I don't know what's going on, but when you reboot it, it suddenly starts working. Yes. So this is the device that does that in an industrial fashion to where you can set it up, you can ping it, you can do a web get on it, um, and if it doesn't work, you can start um, power cycling things. Or you could change a relay so you can do other things like sound an alarm, 
uh, do a smoke screen, you know, anything you want from a you know physical external standpoint. And I'm going to show you that uh, setup, which is here. And this is the IP Watchdog 2. And take a look. See, it's starting to time out. Now, if I power this guy back on, I'm going to plug that guy back in. And in a few seconds, we're going to see that it is going to now catch that. So to configure it, really straightforward, right? Activate the channel. Call it something interesting. I'm going to ping. I'm going to reboot it for five seconds. Here's the IP address. There's a number of things that are going to fail before I go crazy. Easy as that. The configuration for these things really is straightforward. But what's, what's more fun are the applications that customers approach us with. You're talking about things like uh, car washes. I want to know when the door is down. I want to know when the door is up and somebody's gone through. When you start driving through the car wash and the water underneath, starts to spray. Those are all sensors. Those are all things and relays and whatnot. And the HWG product line allows you to do all that. We have people from parking garages that use the water sensors because if there's water in the parking garages and it gets cold, it freezes, they have to send the ice trucks in or the, the salt trucks in. Mm -hmm. So again, the use cases go on and on. Um, yeah, that is the IP Watchdog 2. Um, I'm going to show another one. This is the uh, Poseidon 2. Uh, there's another device which is really cool, which is this guy here. This is the P2 3266. And, um, you know, again, people are like, geez, what's the difference between that last one and this one? Again, they're all a little different. They, they all have their own little, you know, a couple of... It, they usually have a couple of features and then they lose a couple of features. And so what I like about it is HWG only makes you pay for the things that you really want. They don't just have one gigantic product that you're like, I only want two sensors, but I have to pay for 16. Really is cool. Um, one of their flagship products, speaking of a big product, is their P2 4002 series, which I absolutely love. Um, that is their uh, flagship one, and we can talk about that in a little bit. But uh, this is the uh, P2. 3266. It has some uh, lights on here for like power, uh, whether there's an alarm, and then some of the uh, contacts, whether they've been activated or not. Um, there's eight external sensors you can have. So you've got two ports, and people say, "Well, geez, how do you do? How do you do eight out of two ports?" Well, you can you can daisy chain them. So I'm sure you've seen those little phone cord because uh, that's these types of jacks. This is an RJ45. This is an RJ11 jack, which is just like your regular old phone jack. So there's a lot of um, you know, two-to-one splitters out there. So you can get up to eight sensors in here. You've got um, four uh, digital. This one's for uh, power. But you've got four digital inputs for detectors, things like your um, racks. Um, you could do uh, flood uh, sensors. You could do things like... Um, motion sensors, you can do smoke detectors, things like that. It, you know, it really goes um, on and on. This will do SNMP, TCP, Modbus, the whole nine yards, really cool. This does not do Wi-Fi. So this would be a great example to say, hey, the STE2 is great, but I have not two dry contacts. I want to mo monitor two racks, front door, back door, front door, back door. So now I can do two racks here, and I'm not just limited to three, but now I have eight sensors. So you can see how somebody might like this if they only have a few sensors. And then you sort of go up to this next guy right here. So really cool box. Absolutely love these kinds of things. They have rack mount kits for most of them. Um, again, it's a really solid box. Um, and you know, I'm just impressed by their uh, you know, manufacturing um, of these. So that's yeah. the P2-3266. So this is a really cool demo board of their um, WLD relay. And one of the things that I just want to show is that um, if you were to take your, you know, data center here, right, and you had a, you know, rack sitting right here, and it had your, your multi-million dollar, you know, equipment, you could have a flood sensor over here. And usually those are like the little two prong that when the water, you know, uh, touches both the prongs, it it activates a sensor. Well, that could be way over here, and the water could come in over here. So what happens is that this entire data center 
has to rise up two inches for the sensor to be tripped over here. And that could be really bad because your entire data center has to flood. So what they come up with is a really cool product, which is more of sensing cable. So this is the cable itself. This is just to show how it is sort of on the inside. It's probably tough to see on the camera. And this is the extension. So what we can do is we can take this sort of quote unquote cheap cord here and drape it across your entire data center and put the sensing cable right under, let's say, your roof access or your air conditioner. And when just a couple of drops of water come down, it triggers this guy. And guess what? You can do a whole bunch of stuff with this. You can turn on lights and sirens and send it to another HWG box, and you can, you know, it goes on and on. You can do a whole bunch of things with it. But the power here is that we don't have to have the entire data center flood. We can put this cable right where it counts. Customers absolutely love that. They put these in, um, again, parking garages in the actual cracks. So if their water starts to trickle down, yeah. it gets in the cracks first before it floods into the tops where people walk, and then they send the salt trucks in so that that gets cleaned up. So it's 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 great even for uh, preventative maintenance. So really interesting new product again. So from from temperature to humidity to dry contacts to water sensing, these guys can you really do it all? And again, that's just touching the surface of what these products can be, you know, used for. There's even more sensors out there like I was, uh, you know, talking about. David Stempion, University of Rochester, he's concerned about security of these devices. Do they have built-in access control? Do the manufacturers provide continual support to firmware updates to address potential security vulnerabilities? Awesome question. So, a um, couple things. One is they do support SNM v3. Um, and uh, so you have the ability to, you know, um, connect um, securely through SNMP if if you want and and uh, have to. The connections up to the external portal are a push method, so that there's no sort of incoming um, inbound um, authorization or you know activity. It's all pushing it out to the cloud, and that is done through a secure mechanism. Um, the other thing is that they do provide. Uh, software patches, updates. Um, they have a really cool, they've just done it right. So when when you look at network upgrade, you can look at the available version right here. I can just click on that. It's going to tell me that the available version is 1.0.15, and guess what I'm running? 1.0.15, upgrade is not needed right at the current vis uh, version. But if I had to, I click Start Network Upgrade, and it goes ahead and, and uh, upgrades for you. And they're actually really good at, um, you know, fixing little bugs and things like that. They've got a pretty interesting newsletter. They don't really hit you too hard. I don't know. I enjoy the the frequency of the newsletter. It it, it seems to be just enough uh, to sort of tell you what's out there and what's cooking, and you know, it doesn't bog you down. The other thing that I do want to say from a uh, configuration system standpoint is they've also done a great job at, for instance, you want to back it up, click on this, you're going to back it up. If you want to look at the values in the um, in, in the uh, MIB table, you can click on this and actually be brought right into the MIB that they use. Sometimes when we're configuring devices, we're like, geez, you know, how do we get the MIBs? How do we do this? They provide that all on a system basis. So in a way, they they each and every one of these devices are like a self-contained unit that can really take care of themselves and provide the information, the 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 help. Um, you know, here's a text list of 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 common SNMP you know, OIDs. People ask, oh, how do I get this from this device? Well, take a look. They they provide right in the device a little text file to to give you some examples. So here's how to get the name, the value, the you know serial number, so on and so forth. So upgrading is easy, finding documentation couldn't be any easier, and each one of them provides that information. So great, great question. And I imagine they, they send these uh, alerts to you when an upgrade is, is needed, uh, in addition to obviously the newsletter and logging in to see it. Yes, they do. Yes, and that gets into the you know newsletter and whatnot. So, you know, every once in a while, I'll, you know, I'll get something to say, hey, there's a new firmware for the 3266. It fixes X, Y, Z. Go out and get it, and you know, do that kind of thing. 
So security is a big issue, and uh, you know these are the kinds of things, especially when you're turning on right power um, and you know whatnot. That that better be secure, right? If I'm putting the garage door up and down, I don't want to be dropping it on some Mercedes Benz or really anybody's car. You know, I want to know that that is that communication is just going uh, to and from the you know right right master to the uh, HWG device itself. So um, I've not had any issues uh, from that or. Um, had any customers you'll call up saying that there's a problem you know on that end of it. Excellent. Great question. Thank you, David. Yep. Did we answer your question? Uh, yeah, thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Great. Thanks for asking. Where can we go uh, uh, to uh, to get this integration not just with the hardware but but the software? So we we are the exclusive um, resale, and uh, what I like is the uh, technical support as well for HWG products in North and South America. So we get um, uh, inquiries um, to buy and sell these things or sell them, and uh, we also get uh, technical support questions. So people are calling up um, you know, all the time saying, "Hey, I'm I'm setting this up, and you know X Y Z, and we're trying to do these other things. You know, how do we do it?" and um, that is um, that's that's where uh, we um, come in. So when we are uh, looking at um, purchasing these products, the easiest thing to do is to go to our website, TruePathTechnologies.com, and we have it listed everywhere and everywhere. You can go to the bottom of the screen and go to um, you know HW Group. You can go up to the top and do Hardware and HW Group Products. And we sell the full line of products, even if you don't see it in our web card. Um, we have um, all their products lines. So one of the things that we just touched on earlier, and I just want to just sort of show you this guy here, which is a really cool. This is their, their, their sort of flagship product. This is their, their P2 4002 product, which right. I just switched off. There we go. Uh, this thing can do 12 dry contacts. It's got four relays. It can do 16 sensors. This is really the everything and anything kind of, you know. Um, but but we have some local telecommunication companies that have standardized on this, so that every one of their data centers and every one of their um, telephone rooms has this in it. So when they have a generator, low fuel, on battery, running out of battery, water detection, it's a standard because they know and they see the importance of that kind of monitoring and it's great to know that they've chosen the HWG product line you know the P2 4002 line so um, you know easy thing is just you go to our hardware section go down to HW group and uh, you can simply buy these right online we even do uh, reseller discounts um, as you can imagine, people don't just have one data center or one rack. They have to buy 20, 30, 40 of these. We even have um, uh, uh, people that are putting solutions together. We had one company that was uh, putting uh, air conditioners on top of, uh, I forget what company it was, like uh, Chipotle or something like that. They, they were trying out for a bid, and they needed to monitor the air conditioner if it was on, if it was leaking, if it was how much power. And so they chose the HWG line, and they integrated that product into it, and that became part of their solution. I love that. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, you can go to our site. You can purchase them. Um, we have, uh, there are a whole bunch of demos that you can click on right here if you go to View Online Demos. Uh, we have that product matrix sheet uh, right here um, as well. I'm going to go to the little spotlight here. If we have it under here, the uh, product matrix, and these are the um, online demos um, right here. And um, uh, take some time to go through it. See what your needs are. Sort of list out what you're, what you're thinking about, um, what kind of dry contacts or what you want to monitor, and in what different locations. And if you can't figure it out, you can give us a call. We love doing engineering calls and whiteboards to figure out the solution. But I feel very confident that not only can TruePath help you, but we can we can um, make sure that there's an HWG product line or lines that can get you what you need. So 110% from the beginning, these guys get the uh, Cool Tools 2017 award. Oh, I love it. Stamp it right there, Cool Tools 2017. You got um, it. And for any other um, 
software, hardware, cool tool uh, that you may be using that you would like nominated for uh, a cool tools award, go ahead and tweet us at hashtag the path to cool tools. Um, we love to uh, love to hear from you, or you can email us jsa underscore truepath at jamiescotto.com. And um, and for for uh, everyone out there, thanks so much for for your such a great uh, interactive uh, conversation today. Um, and I hope you enjoy this. And and go ahead and check out our other series in this uh, in this fabulous True Path Cool Tools web series. And that's at truepathtechnologies.com. Thanks everyone for joining us, and tune in next time. Thanks everyone. Bye now. Bye.